Yeah, this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, actually. Uh, and France just gave me a good reason. Um, you know, there's more to talk about than we could really get into today. Um, but let me just sort of skim the surface of the topic. The West is misogynistic and always has been. And I mean that according to the uh, dictionary definition. They hate women, truly. There's no other culture or civilization in history, in my opinion, uh, that degrades and belittles women as much as the West. They objectify women uh, so profoundly that women in the West objectify themselves. They used to wonder, you know, uh, whether or not women have souls. And it seems like they ultimately decided that they don't. Women are nothing to them but bodies. Women are nothing but bodies in Western culture. They're decorations. Women's bodies are supposed to be uh, part of the scenery. Nothing but props. That's why you can even have this uh, absurd debate about what a woman is. Because if she is nothing but a body, which is what she is in the West, if she's nothing but, you know, lipstick and breasts, hips and a hairdo, uh, then she can be replicated. A man can make himself look like that. He can do a convincing performance, an exaggerated impression of what a woman is, a lampoon. He can do what's essentially a, a gender minstrel show. Instead of blackface, it's lipstick and makeup and a wig, plus some uh, hormone injections. Because they really think that that's all that women are, and that's all they want women to be. You know that's what they want women to be, because uh, that's what they reward women for being. I mean, I saw a report that's uh, a few years old, uh, but it showed that strippers uh, make as much money as a lawyer on average. Now, in a materialistic culture of uh, commodification, like the West, it's easy to see what the society approves of and what they value, because that's who gets paid. Conformity with expectations is monetized, it's rewarded. So when you send the message to women and to girls that wealth can be rapidly expedited for them if they take off their clothes on stage or on camera, rather than develop their minds, rather than develop their skills, their character, and so on, when you tell uh, women and girls that you're going to have to go to university for years, you're going to have to be in the workforce for years before society will uh, monetarily reward you anywhere close to what it will reward you right now, today, if you will just objectify yourself and get naked in front of strangers. The message is crystal clear. We want you to be what we think you are, which is a sexual object. And if you'll go along with that, you will be generously rewarded. We don't think you have dignity. We don't think you have uh, honor. We don't think you're decent. We think that you're agents of the devil and instruments of sin. You cause the fall of man. That's deeply embedded in the uh, cultural uh, thinking of the West. And clothes, being covered, covering your nakedness, is only for the dignified. That's why they strip you in interrogations to break you down, to humiliate you, to demean you, to create an imbalance of power between you and the interrogators. I know what I'm talking about because they did it to me. They do it to make you vulnerable. Well, that's what the Western society does to women. Forget about slut shaming. They practice modesty shaming, virtue shaming, dignity shaming. Because who are you to think that every man in the public sphere isn't supposed to be able to see your body? What makes you so special? What makes you think that you have the right to deny any man's eyes access to your body? Your bodies are supposed to be public. Your bodies are supposed to be decorations. That's the culture. And they don't want dignified women in the public sphere. They don't want virtuous women in the public sphere. They don't want modesty. So now France has banned women from wearing abayas in schools. Women can't wear clothes in schools that deny uh, male teachers and fellow students access to enjoy their figures, to enjoy their bodies. And of course, uh, this is just a crooked way of banning Muslim women from education. 
just like the public ban on the niqab, France wants Muslim women to stay in their homes, and they don't want them to go to school. You say that that's what we force on women, but because we don't actually force that on women, now you're trying to enforce it yourselves. France is enforcing it themselves. You don't want Muslim women in public. You don't want Muslim women uh, to get an education. It's not us. It's you. You're the one who's trying to prevent them. We don't. They don't want you to go to school. Women, Muslim women, to go to school unless you uh, abandon modesty, unless you compromise in your values. In other words, they're not allowed to be in public. Uh, they're not allowed to go to school unless they uh, go along with your objectification and misogyny. Because Muslim women destroy your narrative about women. And that's unacceptable to you. Muslim women destroy your vindictive understanding of patriarchy. And that destroys your whole narrative about Muslim men in the process. And by extension, your whole uh, slanderous narrative about Islam. Because like I've said before, in Islam, uh, men have authority over women. And we don't say that that means superiority over women. It's just a function. It doesn't mean, for us, it doesn't mean keeping women down. It doesn't mean oppression. It just means more responsibility for men, a duty uh, to protect and to provide and to help and to support and to preserve respect and dignity and to ensure that they will not be uh, objectified and demeaned by every Tom, Dick and Harry or every Francois or Jacques or Emmanuel. It's absurd to pretend uh, that the Muslim world is misogynistic on any scale like the West, especially with regards to the issue of hijab. I mean, I don't think there's any better argument against the claim that hijab is a manifestation of male domination than the advertising industry. I mean, think about it. Companies know and have known for a very long time uh, that men like to look at women's bodies. In fact, there isn't anything that men would rather look at than women's bodies. As much as they might like hamburgers, they would rather look at uh, an advertisement of a beautiful woman in a bikini holding a hamburger than to look at the hamburger itself. That's why you use women in advertising the way you do. In a male-dominated society, women would be less covered, not more covered. Because, well, that's what men want to see. And in a male-dominated society, they control the norms. And this should be understood. In a male-dominated society, in a truly misogynistic society, men believe that it is their right to see women's bodies. If a woman is covered, they feel uh, deprived. The covered woman is defying their entitlement. You can even decipher this in their anti-hijab uh, arguments, when they say that hijab seeks to make women invisible in the society. As if a woman isn't there if you can't see her legs or her hair or the contours of her body. She just doesn't exist if she's not showing you her body. This kind of pseudo-feminist assertion uh, objectifies women even more uh, than the hamburger advertisement that just uses a woman to sell meat. If she's not presenting herself as a decoration on the street for the uh, appreciative eyes of passing men, then she's a non-entity in the West. Whereas a man in uh, baggy trousers, a jacket, and a hoodie, where only his hands and his face can be seen, uh, he's not vanished from the society. Just because you can't see his skin, he's still there. Because men's role in the West is not decorative, women's is. And that passes in the West for female empowerment. I don't know what's so difficult to understand about the connection between uh, conforming with what gratifies men and being therefore dominated by men. And I don't think anyone wonders uh, whether men are more gratified by seeing a scantily clad woman uh, than seeing a woman in the hijab. I mean, whose image is more likely uh, for men to search on Google? Kim Kardashian or Afghan woman in a burqa? No, the West hates Muslim women because they embody uh, the antidote for the poisonous narrative that the West has always maintained about women. And they're afraid uh, that women will catch on. They're afraid that their own women 
uh, will start to realize that they don't deserve to be stripped down in public and objectified, that they don't have to suffer all these uh, body image issues, you know, the eating disorders, the depression, the anxiety over whether or not they can fit into a tight dress or a short skirt to conform with societal expectations. They're afraid that Muslim women will make their own women uh, question their own uh, self-objectification, and then the party will be over. That's what they're worried about, and they're not wrong. Women convert to Islam twice as much as men. That's that many more women whose bodies you won't be able to consume with your eyes anymore. That's that many more women who want to be dignified and don't want to be decorations. The West has been at war uh, with women's self-esteem and self-respect and against their value as human beings uh, for as long as anyone can remember throughout their entire history. And the more so-called liberal it becomes, the more that war intensifies. The more so-called feminism spreads, the more vulnerable and exploited women become. Until you actually start saying that OnlyFans girls are empowered women, you know, feminist role models, because they embrace the norms of sexual objectification to game the system and make money. I'm telling you, you're sick. It's deranged. And the presence of Muslim women uh, in the public sphere in the West undermines all of that. It spreads a cure for a disease that you don't want cured. And France is one of the worst infected. It's one of the most misogynistic and least civilized countries in Western society and one of the most cowardly. So it's not surprising that they'd be scared of Muslim women. And of course, they're getting kicked out of all of their former colonies in the Muslim world. So that doesn't help. I mean, they were ordered just a few days back to leave Niger in 48 hours. And they stamped their feet and clenched their fists and said Niger had no authority to tell them to leave. So Niger turned off the electricity and the water at the French embassy. So they're feeling impotent. They're feeling emasculated. And typically in the West uh, and in France, they assert their manhood by oppressing women. But all anyone sees from this uh, is just a display of weakness, an erosion of imperial ability. I mean, think about it. School is largely about indoctrination, and French schools have apparently failed to indoctrinate Muslim women sufficiently to get them to uncover themselves. So now you have to ban the abaya. You couldn't convince them to take off the abaya through years of state-funded indoctrination in the school system. That means your ideology is losing influence in your own country, in your own institutions. So then you have to resort to force. Well, this approach, the, the resort to force, is always a prelude to defeat. If the French establishment can be threatened by a piece of fabric, well, how the mighty have fallen. So now sisters in France find themselves in a position similar to the position of sisters in Afghanistan. How ironic. Emmanuel Macron became a mullah, except he doesn't have the guts to just be straightforward about it. Like with everything else, they have to do it sideways. They can't be direct. But what it comes down to is they don't want Muslim girls in school. They don't want Muslim women in school. They don't want Muslim women to be educated. They don't want Muslim women in public. Now, at least the Taliban, you know, they have the excuse that their country has been at war for half a century and they want to stabilize the situation, you know, check the curriculum and so on. So they have some excuses for why they're doing it. But France is doing it because they're falling apart without a war. Their civilization, their culture is imploding. It's collapsing because it just isn't strong enough to stand. And their culture and their civilization has not provided them uh, with any way, ideologically, to make it stronger. So at this point, every move they make is the wrong move. Every move they make just compounds uh, the weakness. I mean, I'm sorry for sisters in France who have to deal with this. And I hope that you won't compromise. I mean, anything that you're going to learn in those schools, you could learn from home anyway. And I would tell them, I would tell the sisters in France, that you are already greater teachers than your instructors in those classrooms. And the lessons that you are teaching to the people of France, to the society of France, by your continued compliance with the dignity and the modesty of Islam, uh, those are far more important and far more beneficial lessons uh, for your society 
than anything that they want to teach you.